Very hot. Smokin. Terrible movies you wish never existed. Were you a big fan of the Mask comic? Actually, I was not. Actually, I never read them. So I couldn't say I wasn't a fan, but I can't say I was. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Tough. Not used to Windows. There we go. Blurk, blurk. Blurking on the paint paints. Making that paint blurk. trouble with Facebook Live though. Looks like that plugin's not working. We had problems last time as well. Yeah, I heard. It looks like we're still having problems. Like for some reason Facebook does not want to go live with us. Go on Facebook. Just love us. Jeffrey, love me. Guess I won't be sharing. Shoot. Ugh, so terrible. It's just us Twitch guys. Oh, Dallas knows his mic is live. We're doing a we're doing a hot check. We're getting ready to start in about one minute. You almost ready, Dallas? Yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah. How about eloquent? Oh, got it. Did it autocorrect eloquent for you? Shush. Local recording is going. I used to use the word eloquent and Ron in the same sentence. Ron can be eloquent. He's got like a, a woodsy wisdom. Wow, the woodsy wisdom of Ron. Yeah. 
Yeah. I would watch that channel. I would watch that. If show. it was on PBS. Mm-hmm. Oh, it'd totally be a PBS show. Yeah. Right after Nova. Right after. Oh, you go straight from Nova right into the Woodsy Woodsy Rose, Wisdoms of Ron. Yeah. Totally in. All right, guys, let's start this show. Do it. Boom. That's it. Bum 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 Terracon. That was that was kind of dramatic, right? It was almost Mars the Bringer of War by Gustav Holst. You I don't even so know what that close. is. Oh, that, you know it. That's deep inside my head, I'm like a maestro. Like an untapped potential of compositional glory. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. Hello, everybody. It's Get Your Paint On. It's Thursday, 10 a.m. Get Your Paint On. I'm your host, Dallas. Yay. Yay, Dallas. I just yayed myself. And with me today is my special guest, Mr. Matt Getz. Hello. Hello. Um, um, Megamole99 says, that's a big boy. Can we get a banana for scale? Unfortunately, I ate my banana for breakfast. What about a big pen for scale? We can do that too. And running the uh, mix board is our host, or not the hostess, the... uh, (laughs) And the producer. The The DJ producer with the Mad Mix Extremes, Mr. Lyle Lowry. Lyle Lowry on the ones and twos. What? what? (laughs) Banging out those beats just for yous. Uh, Tenacle for scale? Does that give anybody a... How about a cup? How about a paint bottle? We did the paint pot once. Oh, oh, we did that for Defender X. Paint pot for scale. Like, he can drink this. <laughs> they more black in my bellies. Or mug for scale. The mug is huge. So, that's how big he is. Terracon's really big. He's the biggest of the Montauk monsters right now, right? Uh, Defender X still holds that title. Does he? Currently that you know of <laughs> I ain't saying I know something or I seen something but I've seen something it might be uh, Defender X currently holds it at 88 millimeters wow so I was painting Terracon at Gen Con so we we're going to definitely talk about Gen Con and I got pretty far along on him and now I'm just going to finish him up If that's okay with everybody. Is that okay with everybody? Striker911 says there's a Facebook fail. We know uh, for some reason Facebook is not cooperating. Uh, We will be looking into that shortly. So it looks like you got a lot of him done at Gen Con, Dallas. Uh, Well... That's the funny thing is like uh, Oz came down earlier and was just like, what do you paint today? Because Oz usually checks in on me and sees what I'm painting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm painting Terracon. And then Oz looks at me and goes, why? He's done. (laughs) And I was like, fair enough. But I I just feel like he needs a little more refining. Mm -hmm. Um, I think his lips are a little too red. Like he's uh, not his lips per se because he's a lizard. Lizards still got lips, right? Well, sometimes they got like that ridge of scales, right? Like, is that technically lips, though? That's what I'm asking. Like, technic- uh, scientifically. Scientifically, are they lips? I don't think so. Okay. Oh, there's probably like a biologist in chat who can correct us. A reptilologist? A herpetologist? Herpetologist. I mean, is Terracon technically a lizard? Let's, let's get that out of the way. Or is he avian? Right? Like, Terracon is maybe some kind of dinosaur some kind of dinosaur esque esque creature right like what do we know about him we know that he's from south Terra? america he's evidently been alive forever or is part of some hidden hidden cache of uh pterosaurs right there. so i guess he wouldn't be a dinosaur he's a pterosaur so they're bigger and meaner a bigger meaner for uh, see so i imagine like him with the avian roots, right? Yeah. Like I like the so he's got those digital grade back legs, right? Mm-hmm. He's got the the more upright position. I can see that. I can definitely see that. So I've actually started blending a little red on his chin to kind of represent that kind of avian um, heritage, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Like the that 
plumage kind of thing. Gosh, can we get a alternate model idea? Feathered Terracon. Oh, dude. So looking at Terracon, I was thinking I was going to do like a cassowary style paint job. Where you mm -hmm. have those vibrant reds and blues up on the face. Right. Because cassowaries are terrifying. Yes. So are estuaries. <laughs> That's not true. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Gets, you know not to listen to me. So there's like a blue glow in the back scales there. Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah. I, I got him look like he's charging up. Nice. He's getting ready to laser blast out of his mouth. Uh, is Oz watching? Oz, are you watching? Um, what is Terracon's uh, laser blast power name? Like, does it have a name? Like, have we named their I can't remember if we named their abilities. Because so I've only on, played on their cards, no. But we do provide, like, call-outs, technical information, like the... Um the the name of the the plasma cannon on defender x's chest and stuff i don't think oz has gotten that far yet i don't think he started naming the pterosaur okay. features yet like i can't remember because i've only done play tests so i haven't seen like all the stuff yet so yeah and, do you think uh, there needs to be more red on the chin i'm sorry I, I didn't mean to cut you off no no worries i think like getting that vibrant hue in there would be awesome Okay, we're going to bring that up just a little bit more. So I'm really just refining and just fine-tuning everything on this. Uh, Super Nubs. Yes, this is a Monster Apocalypse model. This is Terracon. He's coming out later this year. Somebody just pitched Terra Beam. <gasps> the Terra Beam. Terra Beam Go! I'm going to put a little purple into this as well nice so dallas maybe you can help me out with something oh. me and oz if he's listening oz and i oz and i um oz and me so we've been talking about how creatures in monster apocalypse get around right and for things Their like ambulations yeah exactly how they move right and one of the things that we've been kind of stuck on is how does terracon get from south america say to Paris if he wants to have a smackdown with somebody in France. Does he swim? Does he tunnel? Like, how do you think the pterosaurs move from one area to another? Um, I mean, I, um, I want to imagine him, like, tunneling through the ground like he can swim through the earth like it was water. He just vaporizes with his terabines. <laughs> It's like super fast, like he's shooting the beam out. Mm -hmm. It's like a low power beam, like it couldn't actually hurt like another monster, right? Because mm -hmm. it's low power, but it's just enough to like blast away the earth. And he's just like, nice. and he just nice. tunnels through the earth. Right. So the other side of the earth is just Swiss cheese. Sure. Because he's just tunneling. Right. Maybe he was like dormant somewhere underground when the meteors hit and then he, he popped up like a. Like, like a Caddyshack gopher? Like a big gopher? Yeah. Like a great big he, lizard gopher? He's like, what's going on up here? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Can he speak with a prudish English accent? Well, wouldn't he have a South American accent? Because that's like, that's where he's from, right? Sure. Sure, but... Okay, fair enough. I, like, I'm not going to try and emulate one because it would just be, like, cartoonish, but... right. You know, maybe he's got a little bit of, like, Portuguese flavor. Sure. Because <laughs> in my that. head at first when we were talking about it, I was just like, maybe he sounds like Picard. Like, oh. Like, he just sounds like John Luke Picard. <laughs> he's like, my Earl Grey tea. Tea. Earl Grey. Hot. Logan. <laughs> Logan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit more red on these little spines that kind of represent like his uh, vestial feathers. So wait, if he sounds like um, Patrick Stewart, <laughs> does that mean that Armadac sounds like Ian McKellen? Like, My we're the future, not them, Terracon! That'd be amazing! Ah! God, that's the best... <laughs> 
Now I'm picturing Armadax wearing that like red velour suit with the fedora <laughs> standing in the background. I really like the. This is the, the best fanfic the ever. Brings forward. It's not fanfic, man. We're staffers. <laughs> See, cat, make it so. <laughs> just a little bit of red, just tinging in that chin area. Does this make sense? Is this looking cool? I don't. I don't know. It looks pretty cool from where I'm sitting. He's got a little red chin. It also brings it out from the green because, like, that's what I'm trying to do is, like, he's very green and very muted. I want him to, like, mm -hmm. have realistic tones, right? Yeah. But then I needed some other colors in there. You know, with all the, the soft tissue that he's got between the the, the ventral and dorsal plates, mm -hmm. you could really get away with some interesting color patterns on the Terracon model. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about this model is I really feel like you could play with it. So, also, I want to... Uh, this was sculpted by Nathan Lombardi, mm -hmm. um, our, one of our staff sculptors. Um, great looking figure. So give him a little shout out. Um, it's a really fantastic little model, fun to paint, got a lot of little textures. But I think you could really do some really fun stuff with this model, like mm -hmm. if you were so inclined. Like you could get some mottling and or stripes or a lot of different tones hidden in here and there. Like you could just Netflix the Planet Earth series and take any of the like unusual birds in that, right? Yeah. As your inspiration. And put a little warm tone in the uh, tissue, like the bendy tissues. That's to represent that they're like thinner and there's blood moving in there and everything, right? Yeah, because, like, no matter what skin tone um, something is, like, if it's alive, it's a, if it's a living, breathing creature with blood flowing through, um, what really helps bring it to life is some of that warmth mm -hmm. in those soft areas. Um, so, like, say here on this inner thigh where the crease is up next to the body, you put a little bit of that warm tone so i'm using like a mix of scorn red and sanguine base and a touch of being purple mm -hmm. and that just makes it feel like it's actually living tissue and what color red are you using right now Dylan? uh so this has been a mix of scorn red beaten purple and sanguine uh base and i'm just kind of putting this in and very quickly making it very 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 thin stretching it out with uh, two brush blending and this will just give that hint of life like even if something's cold right mm -hmm. like or you know this guy's green i want to put that little hint in there because it just just makes it feel more realistic which is why you get those blush colors even in like nis models right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah especially yeah when you look at that's a good point like you look at the nis and they're like very cold um, but we put these, uh, and I like I like the use of the word blush colors there, Matt. Um, I might steal that. Um, but they do have a purpley shade, mm -hmm. so like blush color is a very good term. Um, and their skin, and that makes them look like they're living creatures, not not just ice or you know non living. Well, I remember. I'll you just did. ramble. Is what I'm doing here. I remember you doing that in your um, your Satixis Blood Priestess videos that uh, that came out. What was that like a month ago? Right. Yeah. Where you were really bringing that warmth and bringing that life into her, despite the kind of purplish, inhuman skin tone that you started from. Yeah, because she's still alive. She's still yeah. a living being, and they have to look alive. Mm -hmm. So even though she's inhuman and a you know, just an absolute monster. You know, you gotta, you gotta give that hint to life. So one of the best things about this is because now that you have Terracon, you can play a two monster list. Mm -hmm. But if you play a one monster list, I know it's suboptimal, but just Terracon with a bunch of guard units, because it's a bunch of like, you know, multinational soldiers with high tech equipment just following this this dinosaur around, watching it stomp things, right? 
See, if I was doing that, if I was like, if I was like, all right, I got Terracon and G tanks. I'm just imagining like, like, Defender X has fallen, mm. sir. What do we do? Follow the lizard, <laughs> right? You're just like, roll out. We need to model a tiny Matthew Broderick with a pile of fish just, just to go with Terracon. Mini crate model. I don't think people would, would subscribe to Mini Crate for a tiny Matthew Broderick surrounded by herring. Those people are wrong. If I could get a tiny Matthew Broderick, that'd be great. So hopefully I already answered the question to yes, that Roxy. Yes, that Roxy. Yeah, it's that Roxy. Is it that Roxy? Yeah, it's okay. that Roxy. So I answered that question. So thank you for asking that. Um, Llama Juice 552 says, how about we call the laser strike Shaka Khan? Mm. <laughs> it's funny. Wow. I, I don't know where this pain behind my left eye is coming from, but. <laughs> Uh, Red Death M says, Hey Doug, I know similar questions have been asked, but there's still War Machine and Hordes fluff in development, uh, in development, aside from no quarter offering, which has been quite good. Well, I know it's too soon for you to mention specifics as per dev chap yesterday, but there is some form of novel or story coming out in the eventual future, right? Uh, Red Death M, Doug's not here. I've got Matt Getz. Yeah. Doug's still in his office. Oh, well, our office. I don't know if he's in chat, but if he is, Doug, take it away. Take it away, Doug. I'm gonna put a little bit of this in his eye, under under his eye as well. Now, the one thing I don't want him to look like super bloodshot, mm -hmm. but I want just a little warmth in that soft tissue. That's kind of a fine line, right? It honestly is. Um, if bloodshot works really good, if you want like, um, like hungover pirates mm -hmm. you can do red ink and really get in there and i think it's more about the placement so like the brow ridge and the nose whereas this i'm just putting just the slightest bit of purple on the underside of his eye just to give that little bit of warmth back into it striker 911 i appreciate that moment like that is a cinematic moment but you know you can't cage a terracon like, the logistics alone would be a nightmare, but he's just too fierce. He's just too furious. Look at him. No one puts Terracon in a corner. Dude. Now I'm picturing Dirty Dancing. Like, you know, the lift uh, moment. But it's Terracon and Defender X. Yeah. Who's lifting who? Oh. I think Terracon lifts Defender X. I, I know agree. Defender X is 88 millimeters, but Jennifer Gray is a pretty tall lady, if I remember right. Just slowly spinning in like downtown Atlanta. I just knocking buildings over with his tail. Time of my life. <laughs> oh yeah, they would be just clobbering buildings just, if they were doing that. Just smashing buildings. No, awesome. that was the Coke Museum. <laughs> Little bots of purple and red in my terracon. I think this is soft. Yeah, the uh, like the rear joint of the foot there. Like right here. Seems like this would be a little toned. Boop, 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 boop. Do -do 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 Actually, the uh, the two monster fights at least from my perspective, because I love kind of the emerging story of a match, right? Like whenever you play a game, if you're not thinking about the, the noise of the big cannons firing off and stuff, you're ju just doing it wrong. So I always like the idea of, you know, Defender X and Zor Maxim say, like have that kind of tenuous alliance, but there's the, the moment of respect between the two of them when they bring like Yasheth down or something. Right. enemy of my enemy mm -hmm. kind of stuff, right? 
Frothy Cat asks, Dallas, is this your personal Terracon or is this the studio model? It's mine now. I'm drunk on power. I'm taking it home. Drunk on power and grape knee high. Oh, man. Don't I wish. The dead giveaway, Frothy Cat, is that all the studio models will have those clear bases as they come in the packaging, right, Dallas? Yeah. you have that sweet sort of custom terrain going on on yours. My gravel bases. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like the decorative bases. I like the clear bases, too. Like, I really like the clear bases, but I got I to got decorate. I can't leave well enough alone. So I like the angle iron that you put in there, but man, that must have been an enormous building he just smushed. Hey, this isn't in scale. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I found. So I'm like, you know what? I'm using it. It'll be fine. It works. All right. Hopefully he doesn't look like he's wearing clown lips anymore because he kind of did there for a minute. Striker911 has a good question for you, Dallas. What is your hyperform going to look like? Of Terracon? Uh-huh. I haven't thought about it. What if you just sculpt Saiyan hair onto him? Or maybe that's the feather Terracon idea. Oh, there you go. I just sculpt feathers all over him. I mean, with the uh, the energy buildup between the, the back plates, right? You You could definitely get away with like that that brilliant blue glow on him in a hyper form. Like just, yeah. So that's kind of, okay. You remember that time when Superman died and he came back and yeah, he was all yeah. electricity? Yeah, there's a Superman red, Superman blue. Yeah. Are you talking about Cyborg Superman, Steel, Superboy, and there was a fourth one? That I no, no, remember. after that one. Oh, okay, so red and blue. Red and blue? Yeah. Like maybe I just do him all like electric blue. Mm -hmm. Like he's just... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Exactly like that. Exactly like that. Maybe that's can, what can I mean. Can you, can you uh, articulate that again for me? Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. What? I don't know. I mean, I'll take suggestions because I haven't really thought about it, but I kind of want the feather dinosaur thing now. Mm -hmm. It's like, just sculpt little feathers on his uh, little forearms there, right? And like give him some plumage around his head, mm -hmm. like a big feather dress. And maybe he's wearing like some pieces of other things. Mm -hmm. Like he started to decorate himself some kingly outfit out of parts of other models. I mean, he is Khan, right? Khan! Terra Khan! Terra Khan! I don't remember what. Oh, I need turquoise ink. Do I have turquoise ink out? Do do do. I'm shuffling through my paint box. Paint box. My paint box. Shuffling through my paint box for turquoise ink. I might not even use it now that I'm thinking about it. Man, I dig the pose of this model. Yeah. Like, it. It's funny because the arms are completely disproportionate to it, but it reminds me of the last shot of the T Rex in the first Jurassic Park movie. Oh. Like that, that, that victorious roar. Well, that's what we were going for. Like that kind of like he's just he's just crushed something and he's just like what? Mm -hmm. I am con. So it sounds like Riker's Iron wants to know how many pieces Terracon is. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. So leg, leg, arm, arm, and bottom jaw. Okay. So we pop the bottom jaw off to allow us to get full detailing in the inside of his mouth. That's cool. Does he have like the uh, the ridges in his upper palate? He's even got a uvula. He does. Well, that thing's got to be glowing hot. Just on fire. Put a little more red on these tips, please. Terracon. I bet Terracon eats a lot of whales when he's not eating planet eaters. It's like a fine delicacy for him. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to think, like, with with a body that big, how he sustains himself between between fights. Because during a fight, he's just snacking on whatever, right? Right. 
But when he goes out, what is he really wanting? Yeah. He's a sushi man, is what you're saying. Yeah, I think so. He just swims through a school of tuna, just opens his maw. Roxy thinks he's eating plankton. No way. You don't think so? No. Come on, look at him. He does have the teeth. He doesn't have any baleen, so, like, he's got to be eating some sort of, like, meat. He's eating planet eaters. I bet he would drink an entire lake dry, though. Like if he gets a little parched. Back in the day, he was drinking ram. He was drinking ram back ram, in the day? Ram beer. Was there a a custom terracon or you just... That t-shirt. Oh, oh. We had a terracon t-shirt back in the day. All right, I'm gonna keep, now I'm gonna switch back to the glow a little bit here. Get a little arcane blue. There's something in this room. Did y'all hear that? Yeah, I think it's one of the construction vehicles outside. No, there's something skittering. Oh, skittering. Something skittering? Like a mouse? Like a little gremlin? That would be amazing. That would be awesome if we had gremlins. I mean, I think so. I mean, there was that one light that wouldn't work forever. It could be what's going on with faith Facebook, too. Suddenly everything makes sense. El Pucci asked Dallas, how do I know when to buy a new paintbrush? Uh, when, uh, when you just can't get your other one to work anymore. That's, that's my answer. Um, I'm using a really old paintbrush because I left my good paintbrushes at home because of Gen Con, got me all kerfuddled, um, and I lost track of everything, so everything's at home. So I'm actually using like an old paintbrush. I retired like two years ago, <laughs> and it's still working good enough. Nice. Mm -hmm. Actually, what would you suggest for brush care? Because I know there are people who who are big into like brush soaps and that kind of stuff. I use brush soaps. Yeah. I just, yeah, I go to art store and buy a brush soap. Nice. Do you uh do you do any brush conditioner like the the oils to make sure that they stay supple and don't get brittle or anything? Nope. Too much work. I'm lazy. I need to do some touch-ups on the darkness. I think that that glow works pretty good. Yeah. I like how it's kind of building up uh, behind his mandible, too. Yeah, the little, that, little bit of glow here in his gullet. Yeah, because it's like, that's really thinner tissue there, too, right? Because it, it articulates. So you can imagine the lights just kind of surging up to that point, getting ready to bust out his mouth. Well, you know where the inspiration for that's from, right? Uh, we know. What are the rules for 3D printed bases? I have no idea. Sabian Asher, are you talking about for like tournament play? Yeah, uh, I think the rules for the tournament bases is um, models from Monster Apocalypse. Now, I, 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 this is not, you know what? Cause you, I, I cannot answer that officially, but I, I'm going to give you an answer. Um, my understanding is the models have to be based on an appropriately sized square base. Mm hmm it's a little bit different from War Machine and Hordes, right? Because 
the the monsters take up four spaces on the map and the units take up a single space on the map right so it, it's not the same as measuring range from like a 32 mil base or a 180 mil base yeah. or something my understanding of the rules is appropriately sized square base so i'm just going back in on the underside of these scales to kind of tighten that area up Because if I make the underside of the scales a little dark, it'll accentuate the lighting. Sabian Asher, we also have an upcoming OP event for Monster Apocalypse that I think is called Crush Hour. Crush Hour, yeah. Mm. Um, if that hasn't been posted to the website, it will soon, and they have the the rules on there for conversions and et cetera, and I'm sure that would cover the bases as well. Yeah. Um, I actually edited those, and I don't remember anything that would lead me to believe that you couldn't. 3D print bases within those parameters, you know, so as, so as long as they're the right size and everything. Yeah. Um, and also that you follow the other rules. There's no other non-PP, uh, non-PP IPs represented, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's appropriately sized square bases. Xavier Nasher also asks, what about for War Machine and Hordes? Um, for that one, they are required to be the exact size, so 30 millimeter, 40 millimeter, 50 millimeter. They are required to have the round lip, mm -hmm. um, and you can't have uh, so much overhang from, from whatever your basing is that it obscures the, the lip of the base. Um, so that one's a little bit tougher, but technically not illegal, I think, also. That's, again, not the official answer. You'll want to check the OP docs. I can't memorize everything. That's kind of an interesting question from Frosty Cat, Dallas. If you had the ability to magically change the studio color scheme for a Monpoc faction, uh, which do you change and what to? Uh, b before you answer, though, it's kind of interesting because, like, the the color scheme that you're doing right now is not the official color scheme of Terracon, right? Like Nope. And that's something that you and I and several other people have worked on a lot in No Quarter Prime is presenting those alternate color schemes and providing justification for them in War Machine and Hordes. So yep. I, I wanted to hear your thoughts on it. I mean, my first obvious answer is I mean, I painted my guard white, so I'd want to make studio guard white because then, then it looks like mine. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. But that's not true. Um, I don't have a I, – I, so I work in I work with the color concept. Um, like, I'm part of that team. Um, so I don't feel like I would change anything because – You've kind of already made those decisions. Yeah, I've already kind of made those decisions. Um, and then if I paint something, I mean, that's kind of like my my kind of expression as an artist, right? Of like, well, I want to paint guard, but what would I do with guard? And then I paint them white. Mm -hmm. Right, or I paint my uh, Planet Eater's electric blue, or I paint my Terracon green, blue, light, um, or I paint my Martians with a red glow. Oh, teaser. Um, but if I could just change one Monpoc color scheme to, to like, the, I don't think I would, actually. Well, it's kind of interesting overall too because like when it comes to the official color schemes for models right what we're doing is we're trying to give like a good presentation of it but because it's a hobby game like everybody's color scheme is equally valid right yeah and that's one of the things that i like about the the new monpoc being a hobby game is you're allowed to to be more expressive with your uh color schemes 
Give me a hand. No, it just popped off. Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, official schemes are an interesting thing, right? Is this? It's it's a it's a way to make the model uh, real noticeable and stuff like that. So, like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of thought that goes into why a studio scheme is the colors they are. Yeah. Um, it's not that any other color scheme is bad, right? Mm -hmm. It's just the one we choose. So. And sometimes you get that kind of interaction between lore and yeah. the studio scheme where, like, you know, Kador's red is so iconic or the the metallics of Dard, you know, where we, in the writing department, we can say, like, the reason that Guard uses these particular colors in the studio scheme is like, oh, it's an alloy of hyper metal X and hyper metal Y or whatever. But ultimately, that's justification after the fact, right? Yeah. Because the first concept is what looks good, what helps this model look as good as it can. I would make all Terracon, all pterosaurs avian. <laughs> They'd have feathers all over. Because I'm a big fan of feathered dinosaurs. I mean, we even have scientific evidence. Dinosaurs with feathers, man. They found the uh, the feathered tail, like, what, last year? Yeah. Hashtag 50% more feathers. <laughs> All right, I'm just doing a little black lining to mm -hmm. uh, increase the definition between scales and skin. Man, I'm on the finish line here, boys. I'm gonna put a little black in his nostrils just to make those pop out. And black in the base of this nose spike. Something like that. Oh man, Frosty Cat says they recently confirmed that some, some dinosaurs laid colored eggs. The world has just gotten a little bit more incredible, Dallas. The first Easter eggs. I don't know what else I need to do to him. I don't know, man. Okay, I'm going to paint the this little bit bobs down here. So I can't really see it on the monitor. Do you have like the the growth lines coming out from his talons on the on the feet? Yeah, they're etched in there. Okay. Oh, it looks like I got a little bit of the base color up over one of his toes. I have to go back and fix that here a little bit. So you've done most of the painting, Dallas, at Gen Con. So, so most of our watchers here don't know. How did you, what did you use for the green base color of your skin? That's a good question. So I did the zenithal priming on him because um, I was trying to paint him very quick. Um, and so if you don't know, I got a video. Stop watching. Go watch that. Actually, don't stop watching this because it's live. <clears throat> um, watch the Zen P3 Presents Zenithal Priming so you understand that concept if you haven't watched it or you don't understand it. So I Zenithal Primed him, and then I used different colors of um, greens, and I did just basically washes over top of him. So it's like... Thornwood green, battle dress green, ortic olive, sickly skin. Um, I also did some yellow up in the highlight areas and then glazed over top of that with more greens. Um, it's just glazes of greens over top the the um, black and white zenithal highlighting. And that's how I get that contrast between this side. So you can see it, see that transition right there over to this side. I mean, it almost gives it like an airbrushed quality, right? Right, where because it's all you, rattle can, like that. Yeah. That I just rattle can it black and then Zenith primed with white rattle can and uh, the P3 primer. And then I just used washes and glazes to create the colors. 
and then I put it texture and then glazed over top of it and put in texture glaze over top of it. So it's a lot of glazing and washing. Mm -hmm. That's all I did. That's all I did. I feel like his teeth need to be highlighted just a touch more, maybe. Just some little. And you highlighting his teeth reminded me of those old, like, cartoon commercials where dinosaurs talk about you know oral hygiene brushing their teeth I, remember kids i kind of want a a converted terracon holding a giant toothbrush now like his hands ready to do it look at that i'm terracon and i'm here to talk to you about cavities He's got to take care of those things. They, those are immaculate. Dude, he flosses daily. Three times on the way home. All right, I feel like he needs a little highlight up here on this nose spike. Oh, this brush is terrible. Just using like a little jagged motion to create like some textury highlights. Mm -hmm. Something like that. There's so many different kinds of textures on this model too, right? Like you've got the uh, the hard surface of the scales. You have the the softer tissue. You have those kind of nodule bumps all over him. Like that seems like it'd be something you could really experiment with different organic textures. On oh that. yeah, I mean this guy just begs to be painted in fifty different ways, right? Mm -hmm. He's just he's so good. I mean, I think that's a fun thing. I mean, that's why I'm most excited about Mom Park is seeing how people come up or what people come up with for different ways to paint their models. Yeah. Super excited. Hence the the Paint Your Monster <sighs> contest, Dallas. Yeah. If nobody knows, we have a contest called uh, – oh, my gosh. I can never remember names of anything. I'm so terrible. Um, FP3 My Monster where – we have black and white coloring pages of the uh, first six monsters coming from Monster Apocalypse, and you can download them and paint them, and then submit them, and one lucky winner will be chosen, and I will paint that monster in your color scheme and send you the model. What? So if you didn't know about that, you need to look it up. Uh, if we can get a link somehow, is there a way to do that? Do we have that ability in this room? Do we need to get somebody I, else I there? think we do. And what is it? Hashtag FP3MyMonster? FP3MyMonster. Um, and you can tag us where? On Twitter, Instagram? Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um all those different places, any social media, tag us on there, and we will choose one lucky winner, and I'm going to paint your monster for you. Man, seeing the, the profile shot, the, the red contrasting with the blue glow behind his jaw is just, that's, that's to borrow a word, dope. It's dope. It's going to be dope with seeing people, like, I want to paint somebody's monster. I'm even going to do it live. Nice. Like, I'll be painting it live on stream, so if you're in the stream and watching, you can um, you can guide me. You can be like, hey, um, Dallas, you know what? Like, add a little more blue to that or whatever, and I will – you can basically art direct me on your monster, and then you're going to have that monster sent to you. I'll even – I got – also – 
I got an idea for uh, I got an idea for uh, some stuff on it oh, yeah. that I'm going to add to it. Nice. So hopefully, whoever wins will want a custom base because I'll do a custom base mm -hmm. if they want. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea will be on the since if they want a custom base, you can still see through the bottom because it's clear base, right? Right. So I'll write a special note. Nice on the underside. So it's permanent underneath, mm -hmm. right? So we'll do something fun like that. If if that if the person who wins wants that, right? Mr. Lau Lowry is digging for that link. Uh, there's my face. Stop. Mr. Lyle's our, Mr. Lyle Lowry is digging for that link so he can post it in there in case you haven't seen it. Um, super cool uh, contest. I'm excited to do this. Hopefully you're excited to do this. Hopefully you're excited for a chance to win. Uh, sweet Monster Apocalypse model. And you, so I'm going to make a little wash. Now I realize that I'm not able to do this as a staff member, Dallas, but I might send you a coloring page of Brew Grosh just because. I mean, look, I'm still interested in what all the staffers come up with for ideas, for coloring ideas. Maybe we should do a special, like, in-house coloring contest. I think we should. Get some of the, uh, the guys out in the warehouse, mm -hmm. some crayons and some, uh, some coloring pages of Monpok maybe. I want to know what Johan does. I want to know what Johan does. Boop. So darkening that steel girder there. Terracon, Terracon, Terracon coming to your town. Okay, I got a little Bastion Gray. Striker911 says, I've seen a lot of awesome stuff. My fun uh, Defender X might not win, lol. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll see when we all go to judge. And you you already have your uh, your judging team picked out, right? Like My crack team my of crack uh, team paint of judges. Experts. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys get locked in one of the conference rooms and I just hear like 12 angry men style arguments coming out of that room. You don't understand color theory. This one has chiaroscuro all over it. Amazing. Like that's just what, that's what I want to have happen. That's not what's going to happen at all. Also, there's something really delightful about the idea of Ron Cruzy pulling his glasses down onto his nose and staring at like a coloring book page in that really intense Ron Cruzy way. Just really scrutinizing. Yeah. I've seen some really cool ones on uh, the social media so far. So I, I'm excited once we gather them all up, right? It'll be that moment when we gather them all up and, Sit down and look, and mm -hmm. that that'll be that'll be the fun part. But I just kind of kind of see them by chance, like cursory. Mm -hmm. I'm not digging for them or anything yet, because I, I don't like seeing anything to it's time to judge. Sure. Well, remembering the the last thing like this that we did, the old Company of Iron contest. It, it was kind of a challenge to pick between some of those top contenders. Like, there were a number of them that were of just great quality. Oh, yeah. And I remember everybody who was participating in, in that judging round, like, we all had our own opinions and pretty strong ones that uh, there, there were definitely ones that we all kind of could agree upon, but there was always something that was an outlier in the judgment for whatever reason, right? Made it made it difficult to come down to a, a final choice. It's always tough, right? It's yeah. like especially when you have a bunch of cool stuff. Like it's just like, well, this is all pretty cool. 
So if you really want to be a pain, uh, everybody enters stuff that's cool, and then we fight more. And then I'll have my uh, 12 Angry Men moment. Yeah. I'll just be walking by, and I'll see, like, you over top of one of the other painters, like, just yelling in his face, you don't understand the color choices. You wouldn't do that. No, the composition, look at it. All right, I'm just dry brushing the base to get a little. Uh, Ravineon, Rav, Ravineon, Ravineon. Hey, Dawes, did you enjoy Gen Con Grandmaster? Yes. Is there a page with some nice pictures? Not yet. We're working on it. Things take time. Especially, like, a lot of you guys just got back into the office yesterday. Yeah, I mean, we were, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I took Tuesday off. I had to take Tuesday off. Oh, yeah. Um, I, well, I need to do laundry. <laughs> Dallas, how was your Gen Con? This is the first year I haven't been out for a while. We missed your Gen Con, Matt. That's that's sweet. Because you were supposed to have a baby, and you didn't. Well, I mean... It's, Pagani had a baby. It's not like a disaster happened. The baby just hasn't happened yet. Pagani had a baby. Well, I saw his baby. His baby's adorable. Yeah. Pagani had a baby. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. I guess waiting. Your, uh, your absence is unwarranted. I, I agree completely. <laughs> I was talking to JR. Sending, that was an unwarranted absence. We were to believe there would be a baby on our return. Where is he? Where is this baby? Man, I'm worried that you're going to like <laughs> take it all Rumpelstiltskin style now. Is the baby here? Mm, I'm asking for no reason. What? We're having a blast. Yeah, we we're talking about blast. we're talking about taking Getzlings. <laughs> Just in case nobody could hear him, uh, John Swinkle stepped into the room momentarily to chastise us for enjoying ourselves. That's right. The That's right. Uh, the uh, audience is not enjoying it. It was like you people are insane. Yeah, it was a good a good Gen Con for you. you. You got a lot of painting done on. Gen Con was uh -huh. awesome. We released Mom. Well, we didn't release Mom Pac, but we had uh, pre-release pre Mom Pac, and uh, the demos were banging. Yeah. I heard um, Danny Samuels did a great job at the demos. Did a great job. Knocked them out of the park. He's a natural. Yeah. Just a, he's a, yeah. Lyle, Lyle was at Gen Con. Mm. Lyle was at Gen Con. And we missed you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Being a boss. Heard that you guys had your uh, your malort this year. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. You didn't get the malort. No. Why would I want to do that? Nope. <laughs> no, sir. Don't like it. Well, I uh, I got to see, like everybody else, through Facebook, some of what was going on, and uh, I missed you guys during Gen Con too. I'm sad I didn't get to go see you perform karaoke. I did. I did go to karaoke. What'd you sing? Lyle went with us. Mm -hmm. um, I was gonna do some. Whoa! Where'd this red come from? What the? What? What? What the hell? Um, I was just gonna sing something random, and everybody told me I had to do the Britney Spears, so I did the Britney Spears song. Okay, the Britney Spears song. There's only one. Okay. There's only one. So. Ah! Again. Again with the falling. Maybe you get some magnets on that or something. Maybe just apply some pressure tape. That, that tape has served us nobly for many years now. <laughs> Good job, tape. All right. I think that that is ready for... This dude's ready for final... Final, final, finals. Final, final, finals? Final, final, finals. What's a part of final, final, finals? Uh, black the base. Black the base. Are you going to do any uh, post-clear coat touch-ups on them? Yeah. Um, well, I'll put... Uh, I got some uh, weathering pigment I'll put on the base. Mm -hmm. 
and then I'll clear coat him and then I'll highlight the metals on the base and then I'll be done. So next time you see him, which will be tomorrow, I'll post a picture of him tomorrow. Nice. All done. I'll have him stand next to Defender X. So you, you highlight your metals after you clear coat to help the like the highlights pop more, uh, be more reflective, right? It's called metallosity. Metallosity, pardon me. Pardon me. Um, is there an application similar to that that you could do for like uh, horn or tooth or claw or something to to get that kind of shinier organic keratin look? Yeah, you could you could dull coat and then go back with like um, some gloss coat mm -hmm. or wet effects and put it on top if you wanted that to look super wet or I feel like, super shiny. I feel like sometimes like it, it's a cool effect because you have those different areas mm -hmm. of um, glossiness across the model, right? But it seems like you have to be really, really subtle with that. You do. You don't want a lot of it because it looks, because it starts to look fake mm -hmm. um, and kind of weird. Specularity. That was the, the word I was looking Specularity. for. Specularity. Nice. I'm going to put a little dot of Mara White in his eye. And on this side. What else happened at Gen Con that was dope? What did anybody watching the stream, what was dope at Gen Con that you saw? Like, we released monster apocalypse upon the world we had oh the big announcement the yes, l5r yes. mini crate we're starting with togashi, togashi Yakuni. the dragon clan that model is super sick by the way yeah that model looks amazing it yeah. is super sick and uh, i'm a big fan of l5r mm -hmm. are you guys yeah yeah, yeah. lyle oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah okay so I think all of us, I think a lot of us in here, like whenever I found out, I was just like, what? <laughs> what? I can't believe we get to do this. <laughs> and I was kind of losing my stuff. It was great. Yeah. I, uh, I mostly know L5R through the role-playing games. Um, I know a lot of people know it through the card game or they, they had a, a minis game for a while, mm -hmm. correct? But the... The models, as far as I'm concerned, as like a role-playing game perspective, would be perfect for like playing the new L5R RPG, or if you just want that really kind of sick, custom-looking model for your own games. Yeah, I mean, so that like if you saw the video, um, I did a little video with Wilson, mm -hmm. with Mr. Matt Wilson, our chief creative. See, he even got his title wrong, and now I'm going to get it wrong. Chief Creative Officer, Matt Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, where we showed off the painted Togashi uh, Yokune, and not only in a studio version, like fully painted, fully, you know, visualized um, form, but I also uh, painted up a token version. So, like, yeah, I saw that. I just put him on a base and did him green and then he's just there and he could be used for like your card game or stuff like that. He doesn't have to be a miniature for like, you know, um, the role playing game, but he could also be a miniature for your card game and stuff like that. So I think, I think he's really cool looking. I'm really excited to be part of this uh, project. So super excited. I'm done. Look at that. Look at that. Terracon done. Go. What else do we have to talk about real quick? Do we have anything to talk about from Gen Con? We talked about L5R. We talked about Monster Apocalypse. Uh, do we still have the brew garages up? They might still be up. I know we extended it a little bit. Did we extend it for a little bit? A little bit. So brew garage might still be available if you missed brew garage. Go check the store. It might be still available. If it's not, like maybe we should just do that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have rules. I can't. I can't do that. I can't do that. Remember, if you say it, then it becomes true. I'm, I'm sure that Shik is watching right now. Oh, I just got a they gone. Oh, they gone. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, see, I don't know. I, I think one of the coolest things that I heard out of Gen Con is that people had multiple painted 
Monpok armies for the first ever Monpok tournament with the new game. Yeah, the Monpok tournament had like a pretty good turnout, and yeah. uh, Oz ran it, and it looked really fun. And there was fully painted armies, which yeah. is crazy awesome, right? Yeah, because everyone had got the models two days before at most. Yeah, yeah. They just went back to their hotel, cleaned them up, painted them up. And you know, I love that, right? People who are willing to to go that extra mile to make sure that they've got a painted army that they can bring to the game. Hashtag play it painted, right? Play it painted, exactly. Like, get in there and get your model painted. These models paint up super easy. Mm -hmm. Like seriously, like base coat wash, dry brush, like goes a long way on these models. Um, we're, we're really thinking about when we're making them. We're really, I had a hiccup there, sorry. No it was like a hiccup all trying to hold it in. Um, we're really thinking about trying to make these models or uh, while we're making these models, like being easy for the end user. So, uh, I think they're all been real, super easy to paint. They've been really blast to paint. So very, uh, basic techniques will get you a real long way on these. So basically yeah. Although, highway. like looking at this, right. If you want to take your time and apply more advanced techniques, they look spectacular. Look, yeah, these models, just, I mean, this is just the, I'm just going to say damn beautiful model. Mm -hmm. This is a damn beautiful model. Um, I love this thing. It looks so dope. I can't wait to get the uh, the units very soon. Nathan Lombardi, I need my units. Is he watching? He better be watching. Nathan Lombardi, I need my units. I'm just giving him crap right now. Um, other than that, it's 11 o'clock, and I think it's that that's lunch, right? That's lunch. Yeah, it's time to go. So we finished our Terracon. Remember, every Tuesday is the weekly Rumble, where you get to watch your favorite um, – privateer press miscreants play games and make jokes and have just a jolly good time every wednesday is the dev hangout the dev chat the uh the time when the dev team comes down and uh, gets up into the uh, video studio takes it over kicks me out and says cool things about rules and uh, math and playing games with people and all that kind of stuff every thursday of course you're watching right now get your paint on um which you just know what it is now because you just witnessed it. It's painting. It's getting it on. It's getting your paint out. And then, of course, every Friday is P3 Presents where we drop some uh, sweet paint knowledge bombs in a more controlled manner with less chaos. And then tomorrow, it just came across the chat, is Primecast Live. Primecast Live Which tomorrow. you never know who's going to be on that. Well, I know that, I know that I'm going to be on that. Oh, you're on tomorrow. I am on tomorrow. Teaser. Well, like, I got an email. I might get in a car accident or something. Jeez. Way to bring the end of the show down, Gats. Yeah, way down. <laughs> that, that way they're hyped for Primecast tomorrow when they see that I made it in okay. I have to go home with that in my heart. I'm going to be wor <laughs> I'm gonna be a worried wreck all night. Did, did, did Matt get in a wreck or not? Do you want me to text you when I'm, I get home? Please, will you? I will. I will do You that. know what I want you to do? I want I you don't. to call me collect and I'll deny charges. Oh, <laughs> People still call collect. I hadn't even thought about that. Yes. I don't think that's even a thing, is I'm gonna, it? I'm going to try it. I I have to try it now. <laughs> I don't have a phone. There's a collect call from Dallas. I made it home. Okay. Would you accept the charges? Right? Like. I Oh, dude. Totally did that all through my childhood. Like going back and forth between my mom's house and my dad's house. <laughs> yeah. That's because when we were kids, we didn't have cell phones, right? No. We had pay phones. No one had cell phones. Primecast Live tomorrow. Boba Flex asks, what time is Primecast Live tomorrow? 10 a.m. Pacific. Same time as all of our other shows. So anyways, we're rambling now. And uh, so uh, until next week, this is Terracon signing off. <laughs> Now you're just letting bodies hit the floor. Every day. Let the paint pots hit the floor. Let the paint pots hit the floor. <laughs>